Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. Happy Friday. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Happy to see you. Some familiar names coming in. I know it's been some time. I'm Bailey Mizell, the Director of Photographic Arts Council Los Angeles. We're joined today by Martine Weber and Michael Hawley. We'll get started in just a second. It's good to see some of your names. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome. Happy Friday today. We'll get started in another minute or so. It's good to see some familiar names. We're here with Martine Weber and Michael Hawley. <laughs> we'll get Hello, started everyone. in just a minute. We have some exciting news for you. Martine has some wonderful works to show you in a lovely presentation. Get the Friday started out well. Hi, welcome. All right, just another minute or so, let others make it in. Let's make sure. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome. We're getting started in just a minute. It's good to see you, happy Friday. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add live transcript here really quickly, subtitles. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome. We'll get started in just one more minute here. We're just letting others make it in. It's good to see you, happy Friday today. I'm the director of the Photographic Arts Council of Los Angeles, Bailey Mizell. We're joined today by Martine Weber and Michael Hawley. We'll get started just shortly. Um, Bailey, the chat's disabled. Um, Is it? Yeah. Okay. I will fix that. I don't know why it says it's enabled here. Hmm. All right. All right, everyone, we'll get started. So again, happy Friday. Thank you for joining us today. We're joined by Martine Weber, multimedia artist and filmmaker for an artist talk. Uh, our board member, Michael Hawley, is here joining me today for our intro to give us some new news about some upcoming things we have coming up. Um, so I'm just gonna hop into a quick little intro. Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, um, we are PACALE, we're a nonprofit, nonprofit organization that fosters the education, scholarship, and advocacy for the photographic arts and lens space arts. Um, we're made up of our membership and board of directors, uh, collectors, photographers, students, educators, and curators. Um, and I'm happy to announce to you today that we'll be um, opening our inaugural forthcoming uh, photo fair, Photo Forward Los Angeles, this February. Um, at Bergamont Station. Um, my board member and colleague, Michael Hawley, will give you some exciting little pitch about it, but um, I just wanted to give you that insight really quickly. Yeah, do you want me to take that? Sure, please, Michael, any insights you can. Welcome everybody. And um, just to, we're, I'm gonna do a quick thumbnail. We're having a uh, um, an art fair, a photography fair and photo-based art fair at Bergamont Station in Danziger Gallery, number B1 or suite B1, there are 12, um, exhibitors coming from all over the place, from Canada, from Northern California, from New York, from everywhere. And um, and we have uh, here, here it, here's a little postcard for it. This is uh, a picture by Tatiana Parcero, who's one of the one of the dealers. JDC Fine Art is representing her. And it's um, it's it's the it's uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday 18th and Sunday the 19th of <laughs> February at Bergamont Station. And I hope you can come it should be really fun and um, lots of photography at various price points and from uh, various types, contemporary, modern, um, uh, vintage photography as well. Yes. So, so we're looking forward yes. to seeing you there. And um, welcome people who are who are not PAC members here, please join and please come to the fair and um, you can join right at our website if you're, if you're not already a member, but thank you for being here for our members. Yes, thank you, Michael, for the pitch. Um, and also a big part of our mission is to push the education of collectorship. So that's also a big part of um, our forward facing mission with the photo fair as well. So we're the first nonprofit in LA to put on a fair of the sorts. So we hope you'll join us. You'll see in the chat that I've included some links for today, um, one of which is the website to photo forward and also to PAX programming that's coming up. The next one will be at the Hammer for a walkthrough for Joan Didion's current exhibition, group exhibition. Um, and then I've also included some links to Martin's website where you can read his full biography and see all of his current and ongoing works and press. 
and then a few links here to his uh, most recent publications. So you'll see that in the chat. So just before I get started introducing our panelists, I'll just give you a quick run of show and then we'll hop right into the presentation. Um, so typically we will have the uh, Martine presenting for 40 to 45 minutes. Um, and then at the end, I'll return for an open Q&A and conversation. Um, during the presentation, at any point, if you have any questions or comments from Martine or us, please add them to the chat in the Q&A below and we'll get right to them at that time towards the end. I'm gonna introduce Martine really quickly and then we'll hop right in. Martine Weber is a multimedia artist who studied at the University of Buenos Aires and the ICP in New York. Map of Dreams Latin American, his directorial debut, has won the documentary award at Sin Latino, Reconstre du Tuli 2020, an honorable mention by the official jury at the Brasilia International Film Festival, slash BIF 2020. Uh, in 2019, Weber was awarded by Kraft the International Award in Photography. In 2018, received the Magnum Foundation Fund. In 2016, the Grand Prize on Installations and Alternative Media at the National Salon in Argentina. In 2011, his book Echoes of the Interior was nominated in Paris Photo in the top 100 photo books published between 1997 and 2011. So obviously, Martini is very impressive. We'll be talking about that book and some of the books mentioned here um, in his presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Martine to say hello, and I'll be running the slideshow. And we'll turn it to Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. thank you and thank you for all being here although you know it's it's strange to speak to this camera but uh uh well uh i'm gonna start um by just introducing you know well somehow the process that brought me to do what i do um so if we can start with that presentation i can see it uh, i'm not seeing it yet i will be pulling up this shortly martin okay thank you Polly. thank you Michael, and thank you, the Photographic Art Council. Okay, um, where to start? Uh, my, my, my approach to photography was from the beginning, this idea very different from you know, what you usually expect. Like I started uh, being very much influenced by the photographs that my father used to show us uh, as, as I was a kid, you know, he will once in a while set up the slides and he somehow will edit those slides and show us our life. In that sense, from early on, I realized that photography was in a sense, and it is a construction. So uh, when I started this first project that I'm show, gonna show like a couple of them, uh, you can pass to the next one and the next one. I was thinking of, you know, how to come to, to bring together two things, you know, the world outside and the memories that I had as a child. You know, the, just the images that you saw had, you know, this chill, this child with an image of, you know, one of our founding fathers in, in Argentina. And this last one has this silhouette that is not exactly the silhouette of those disappeared that I have seen, you know, in my early years of, um, of as an adolescent in uh, near the Plaza de Mayo, which is where people went to protest and went, went to claim for those that had been disappearing during the last dictatorships. So in a sense, I could not photograph those images at the time that it was happening. So I was going out trying to record that memory and bring it on. Can we go to the next? And the other thing that I realized that most of the images that I, I was encountering in my early years were mainly produced by Europeans or Americans. So this, you know, four images that I show you at the beginning was part of this very little essay that I tried to put together at the beginning. There were more, there are around uh, 15, but then somehow navigate that idea of, you know, not only seeing what I see outside, but trying to bring you know, back some of the memories that I have of a, as a child. Can we go to the next one? When I finished that, I had already started uh, studying art history in the university. And that brought me to the approach and to the readings of many authors that somehow were kind of, you know, taking apart the, the practice of photography. Uh, among them was Roland Barthes, who was talking about how photography, you know, just turns everything into past. And that was something that it struck me. 
The other thing that I also was looking at the newspapers and seeing how the captions on every image was directing me how to read that image. Um, that has not had nothing to do with the moment in which, you know, the photographer encountered a subject and the subject didn't have anything, you know, to say about what was going to be written afterwards. Not only distance from the moment that the, the image was made, but also distance in terms of uh, of the the extraction from there. And it's going to, what's going to be, I mean, the, the um, the caption was going to be placed in a, in a newspaper, you know, office far away from, you know, where that event or encounter had happened. So I started this project. Um, I wanted to challenge with the idea of, of how to create a, um, an image in which those who have participate will have some power given back to them. How to, you know, change from taking an image to create one in collaboration. Those were many of the things that triggered this project that started very little, you know, with this idea of, of how we, I've learned in my case, as I said in my early years, to name the word outside. And that was by writing with chalk on a blackboard at school. So I decided to do, to take that, um, to this practice, to try to name, you know, the world inside something that it was invisible by the same use of chalk on a blackboard. Also to, you know, refer to those images of people that were actually asking in, in protest, you know, with signs written on them. You know, there was this dialogue and this kind of appropriation that I thought I was, I was also referring to. And this image was one of the first one I had this idea and then it took a long time from the moment I had the, the idea to, to the moment I got to the first images that stayed on the project. That's one of the things that you'll see along all the, the projects that I'm gonna try to show you is that uh, it's not only about, you know, what the practice of photography it is in the moment, but it's, I'm, I'm very much driven by the ideas and readings and things that actually make me think of things that I need, I want, and I want to accomplish with the process, as well as how that image is presented. Can we go to the next one? So that the one before was in San Antonio, in Texas. Uh, it was a guy from Guatemala, and this was. The, I was doing that process while I was doing uh, uh, while I was still in New York back in '92. When I went back to Argentina, I decided that there was something that connected me to something uh, that was very specific to where I was coming from. So that's where this idea of you know trying to portray Latin America started. This idea, because also you know I was uh, I was growing up, uh, there was this very much powerful movement of Latin Americanismo, which is, you know, this idea of trying to build together what we had as different countries, but trying to find the things that we had in common. So I wanted to kind of kind of challenge that idea of, you know, what is that we have in common and what is that we separate us? And this woman, one, what she had written was that she wants to have her own land. So, all these ideas are going through. I luckily got this grant, the Guggenheim, to try to put together this project throughout various countries in Latin America. But can we go to the next one? I'm gonna do a, a big jump here. I got like those writers uh, stress, you know, blocks. I kind of, you know, got this, you know, all this weight on me trying to do this big project. And at the same time, the president of Argentina was doing this announcement in this little school, you know, um, out in, in one of the provinces, you know, in the rural area. And he was announcing that we were gonna like, um, we were gonna send rockets to, to the Straits of Fear and they were gonna land in Japan in two hours. And uh, that got me thinking of many of the things that, you know, are gonna go through all these projects is, 
how these spaces are mainly used in, in speeches like that um, to kind of uh, take from, you know, the interior provinces, in, in this case, Argentina, places, you know, where people with power usually go uh, when they want to refer or address this romantic of image of the country, but, you know, places where, you know, the decisions are made in the centers of power rarely affect them. So I started this project trying to look back. And this is an image, one of the few, I think, that are just in Buenos Aires. The rest is its interior. And it's, it's a project called Echoes from the Interior. Echoes from the Interior. Um, and I start to think about the layering, the history. And that's one of the things that you're going to see throughout many of the, the images. In this facade, you have you know, a building that at one point was this rich house. Then it became a tenement for immigration coming from Europe in the late 1800s and beginning of the 19th century. And uh, in, in the later 1900s and my childhood, this became tenements for the people that were doing a diaspora within the country. And this building is all, you know, with all these written words that in some cases you can say, uh, is, is a place for Peronistas, is one of their, um, one of their political parties' um, uh, centers. At the same time, you see a, a sign that says Carlos Galdel, that, which is this famous uh, Argentinian tango singer. Then there's a description saying, Evita vive en el, en el corazón de su pueblo. Evita lives in the, in, in the heart of its people. So there are all these layers there that I want to take on. And, and I started to decide to, okay, let's look back, let's go to the interior and find, you know, places that have a specific history that will tell me something about this country that is not being shown. Can we go to the next one? So here we have a monument in which Perón and Evita, these famous politicians that addressed the people and wanted to pe pu pull the masses uh, out of um, neglection. And they actually did a, a balcony. Uh, I mean, they used to speak from the government sound from the balcony. And this sculpture actually brings the balcony as part of the, of, of the monument. But in this case, place in a place in, in a space that in which they are speaking to no one. Can we go to the next one? This is, for example, a shrine dedicated to Antonio Gil. Um, this brings us, you know to the history of, uh, of a civil war. This is uh, a, a sanctuary that is a shrine in which people go and pledge you know, promises. But it's got started during that time because this guy, he didn't want to fight against his fellow citizens. Uh, so he was actually executed in that place. And it, it was said to be that his blood, red, which is covering all the shrine, actually was able to, to bring, you know, some miracles to people. So people started to go to the shrines. And these shrines, you know, during the times of crisis have become very important. And people, instead of going to the, to the government to ask for things, they actually go to the shrines as a supplement. Can we go to the next one? So we see in this project also this idea of time, how it, there, there is this, Elements, again, Perona de Vita, posters that are from the, from the middle 50s, 1950s, that are still there. You know, this idea of, um, of how is, there is a time that, that actually inhabits the presence in a way that is very disorderly. You know, there's, there's, it seems that there is no beginning and, and, and somehow there's this chronicle that is being shut off um, and somehow there is this present that inhabits in a very, very disorderly way. Can we go to the next one? Then there's, you know, images like this in which the, this is Manuelita. There's a famous um, uh, children's song in which the story of Manuelita is that she's always looking into Europe and she wants to rejuvenate. So she goes to Europe, but she takes so long to go and come back that by the time she's back, she's old again. Can we go to the next one?
Black and White TV arrived with 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 a uh, with the first broadcast was Perón and Evita from the from the government house, and and coincidentally or paradoxically, you know, the first you know um, broadcast in color was during the, the time of dictatorships and was with the with the World Cup soccer World Cup in Argentina. Next. Then there's this idea of immigration, how it's a country that's built on immigration. And, and one of the things that I started to look is how we are composed by different people. And at the same time, finding these elements in which, you know, like there's this chess play in which the guy who's sitting there is losing. Next. Also, this is there's the idea of going to places that have a specific relationship to our history. This is a, a tavern where Don Segundo Sombra, who is a character that inspired uh, uh, like this epitome of uh, gauchesque literature, used to go. So I chose that place uh, to photograph this moment in which this guy is waiting for somebody to come. Next. This is a place, you know, that belonged to the Marques uh, de Xavi, a place where there used to be uh, uh, one of the first edition of the, the Quixote that during the crisis of 2001 was, was stolen. Next. This is tradition that I found in which they marry the best two sheep, you know, in order to kind of, you know, invoke a, a good breeding for the next year. Next. One of the things that I found is that this, all this, you know, rich uh, rituals in which people kind of came to terms with, you know, where they live. And one, this is one of the things that came from the Incas. And it's this uh, ritual in which they actually are, feeding the heirs. They used to do it with chicha, with this, with this fermented uh, maize, maize, but now they're combining it with, you know, prefabricated uh, liquor and, 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 and sodas and cookies. Next. In this plate of marbles, what I found through research was this idea that, you know, it, it kind of represented the journey from earth to heaven. And one of the rules was that you are not supposed to play the, you know, copy how the other players play, because that will actually be, be like, uh, be um, infringing the, 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 the rules of the game. Next. This is a space uh, which is Malvinas, the Falkland. And one of the things that, uh, that was very impressive was that during the war, this is a, a wing of a, an, an Argentine aircraft that, you know, that was uh, taken down there. And one of the things that I remember as a child was how our you know, military leaders that at that time was the dictatorship were always announcing that we were winning. Next. And this is one of those moments in this, in which this project also pivots. That is, you know, this is the day that we had this, um, this crash. It, is, it was 2001, it was December. It was a moment in which uh, we defaulted as a country. And in one week, we had the fall of one presidency and fall of a, four other presidents kind of went through in one, one same week. And again, it's this idea how in this avenue, which is named after one of the, the founding fathers who liberated Argentina, Peru and Chile. Uh, and in this place, you find these accidents that everybody's looking. And even there's this uh, US Army um, Jeep that is coming by to check on it. So it's not only, you know, what uh, what you see in these images, it's what they evoke that I was interested. And this is a project that um, spanned from 95 to 2002, which 
This is one of the last images. Next. So going back to this project, uh, I continue. Those were two projects that are for, for a few years, I kind of maintained trying to work um, in, in a parallel way. In, in, this, in this case, one of the things that also I was inspired with was uh, Bertolt Brecht, and he used the use that he had of, of signs uh, on the stage, he was a um, he was a play writer, and he was interested in this idea of how to bring people to identify with the people that are on stage and 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 their and their situation, but also to step back and have a distance. And that's why he used props to actually make people understand that this was a construction, and to think about the context around those people. What is the distance, like in this case? from expressing a dream and actually the chances that that dream will come true. And this is the son of a, one of the disappeared during the dictatorship. And his dream was to have the memory of how my disappeared dad lived his dreams. Next to him is Licha, one of the founders of the grandmother of Plaza de Mayo. Next. This is still Argentina, and this is one of those impossible dreams that my mother lived 50 years more than he has. Next. Uh, to be a lawyer. Next. This is my family, and my father wrote then, I wish to live for my wife, my children, and my grandchildren. Next. He wanted work for my family. Next. This is Cuba. That's the idea. I, I started with Argentina, but then I started to travel to other countries. And her wish was to marry a Yuma, which is a slang for American. And this is the border, the limit that actually is where you know Cubans could not go beyond without a permit, without a, a, a family member inviting them, or you know, it's the limit that where the, the restriction became true. Next. Uh, to have the happiness to have to be able to live. Next. I'd love for every Everyone, four lefties and five righties. Again, going to Cuba, there were three elements that happened at that time. Uh, there was um, a game in which they were going to play the Venezuelans, and there was a rule that was going to be taken that uh, the player should not be older than a certain age. And uh, Fidel had disguised a couple of their best players with beards. Uh, and have them play, and that's how they beat Venezuela. Again, next. I wish to be a child again. Next. I wish to be a poet. Next. Forbidden to forbid. Then there's this idea of how we know, um, this is a slogan from the 1968 uh, uprising of students in, in Paris. And this idea of how sometimes taking words that already preexisted had play with the political environment. When we finished this image, I heard on the background somebody saying, oh, if Fidel sees this image, you'll be in trouble. Next. that our needs don't disturb our dreams. This is one of the, the guys that, you know, just took the blackboard and wrote right away without even thinking. Next. Pistola, pistol. We're in, in Chiapas, in Mexico. Uh, this is a Zapatista uh, community. This is 10 years after the uprising in, in, that they had in 94. Uh, the uprising was just after, you know, Mexico had announced that they were going to join NAFTA, the North Treaty Agreement. Um, 
soon after that, the Zapatistas came to terms and they just want, decided to become a political movement and actually, you know, defer from fighting. And, uh, and that's one of the, one of the, the most inspiring uh, uh, gestures that I found and found over the years, even going back that I'm gonna talk later with the film and how, um, how they constructed an image that they needed to actually regain power on their future, but the, the right choices they made after that. Next. I wish to be a policewoman. Thinking about the gun, this is a community in the border just uh, passing on the other side of, uh, of San Diego on, on the Tijuana border where, you know, maquiladoras, companies that manufacture things for the U.S. go uh, to find, you know, uh, labor, low labor unions um, um, restrictions. Um, and this was a community founded what, by women uh, that found needed a place to live near where those maquiladoras were, were taking, uh, were, were placed because they needed to go to work. Uh, they settled there. Suddenly those properties became valuable. And soon after the police were actually part of the people that were trying to take them out. So it was paradoxically that she wanted to be part of the empowered people, but that actually were trying to push them out of their, of their living quarters. Next. My biggest wish is to, is to finish my studies. Uh, this, it's like a very simple dream that you think, and that's one of the things of this project, to think of how simple dreams sometimes seem to be somehow so difficult to accomplish. This is a story that I went back many years later in the film that I'm gonna talk later a little more and found how this very little story had turned into a nightmare. Next. That every time you don't feel alone. Uh, this is one of those moments in which I decided someone to ask uh, a wish for actually somebody else. And he wanted to be her boyfriend. Next. Cariño, uh, tenderness. Um, it was very interesting to see them together there, how this capsule of loneliness were holding them together. Again, Tijuana, near the border, a story that I went back again to. Next. Our dream is to cross the border, to work, to earn money, to able to live um, with a family that we will have. I was told that actually that place that looked at that time so easily to cross was one actually the one most watched. So most probably they were taking after that. Next. To be a tourist guide. Uh, this is an homage to Martin Chambi, a photographer, a Peruvian photographer from the 1930s, who actually had an image like that. And I asked the policeman if he could collaborate on that. And actually, the story becomes true in a sense that those kids uh, were actually taken from downtown Cusco because they were not allowed to sell this little postcards that they hid in this little box. Next. She wanted to have a house that would be big and fenced in. And that's written in Quechua and a uh, native language. Next. This is actually the Chambi family and that's an original background. And she wrote to find a way to to, to, be, to be able to manifest what she carry inside. Uh, again, you know, contemporary life in, that was interrupted by these phone calls all, on the cell phone. And I thought it was very interesting to include that in, in this portrait. Next. A long life without sadness. Again, in the phrasing of many of this, uh, th this wish, you find, you know, like in this case, the need to clarify that it should be along, but without sadness. And it was like a, you saw at the beginning, I was aiming for like uh, one word or two. And 
soon enough, I found out how in the phrasing people said a lot more of what they embody a lot more for the intention of what they meant, but what they wish for. Next. These are uh, university uh, teacher and both, two of them, the ones on the right that are smiling, wanted to win the lottery. The other two wanted uh, uh, to be in peace with God and the one in the far left wanted to be, wanted peace and social justice in the world. Next. This is Nicaragua. And again, she wanted to find the body of uh, her son falling in combat against the dictatorship of Somoso. That was the power how words could bring into, you know, uh, into an image, something that is not there. It's not visible. It's not in that location. It's not about that time. She was bringing the story of her own son she was talking about that body and you know how that was something that is um that she was sharing something that was secret that was one of the things that I, I, it became really powerful how people started to choose uh, the words clearly to actually in some cases starting to denounce something that had happened to them next my wish is to see my ch child, children prepare to face the problems of unemployment. Next. That my son sends what he had promised, the money. Again, talking about something that goes on throughout Latin America, and especially in Central America, uh, that people actually send money back, they leave, they migrate to actually to find a place where they can make better money to support the family back home. Next. He wanted a, a Nintendo. And when we finished doing this image, I, I heard the, the mother side and she was saying like, like it could come true. Like I had, I wish I, I, I would have asked for a house. Next. To return to Europe, uh, I was fascinated for the, you know, the representation of his family that they, they had in, in these images, you know, how many of them were portrayed. And, and again, when I went back, I actually interviewed her, the woman that are on the right, uh, on the left, that was raised by that family. And, and she talked a lot about, you know, the people that that were in the family and her relationship to them but at the same time it was very interesting that she felt part of the family but no picture of her was on the wall next this is guatemala and he couldn't write so i wrote for him um and he said they killed my son they took away my sustain and now i'm sick that somebody helped me and the image that you see on the walls are you know, even some that are three on the on the right that are actually almost the same are images of that that son. Uh, Guatemala was was impressive in that sense. It's, it was a population of two hundred thousand, in which and uh, uh, seventeen millions. We talk in Argentina of thirty thousand disappeared over twenty five million people. In 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 Guatemala was twenty two hundred thousand in a population much, much smaller. Next. She wanted to have three children. Next. To help my children that are in the United States to pay, pay their debt to the Coyote. The Coyote is to, that, that is, are those guys to help them, in this case, to travel from Guatemala into Mexico and then to the United States. They usually get in debt to them. And when, when I visited her there, she actually was act thinking of selling her little plot to actually pay for that debt. Next. That Jordan de Sasser will marry me. Next. 
I want my country free of domestic and political violence. Next. This is Brazil. And he wrote, I, I uh, myself, Page, want to my daughter to study so she can defend her rights. This is something that uh, all throughout Latin America, the idea of, and, and even the US, uh, the idea of, you know, this community that have been pushed into reservations in which they find, you know, very little ways to sustain, not only economically, but culturally, they, their ways of living. Next. This is in a favela, famous Rocinha in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil, to have a lot of money. It was interesting when I went back because I tried to find this, this family um, and I found out that they had left. Next. She wanted uh, to have silicones. It's a uh, transvestite who, you know, uh, is, is one of the things about uh, Brazil that is so emblematic of a culture uh, this is, that is always in changing and that had ex accepted this as something that is, it was much more normal in that in, in many other countries before uh, as something natural. Um, one of the shocking things or not uh, was when I went back that he, he had, she had died uh, of AIDS. Next. Um, a, a trip to, Long, to Europe, country, London. Next, to have the to know the truth of what happened to our family members, uh, to um, to to be able that, that there will be justice and the torturers will not stay punished. One of the I mean one of the things about Argentina that well now there's a film that that is being nominated in 1985. This thing of how in Argentina people were judged for what happened during the dictatorship. Impressive enough in many of the countries in, throughout Latin America, that is, was not the case. Among them is Brazil. Next. This is Colombia. Uh, that, that was the dream that I never thought that I want, I mean, not, never thought of finding and never wanted to have found. And his dream was to die. Uh, when I asked why, when we finished, uh, he, I mean, he showed me the scars that he had and he said that he didn't have a place to go home. Years later, when I finished the book, he became, you know, the cover of the book and the information that I had then was not the information that I found when I went back uh, to film, to do this film, in which this story became much more complex um, and invite you to, to watch the film when you can. Um, next, individual responsibility and not imposed government. Next, to travel to Miami to my brother. Next. that they return the remains of my son, Jose Luis Olivo Cárdenas, victim of the paramilitary. Uh, Colombia has one of the things, you know, the violence that was, um, that started there, it seems that they don't know when it started. It started so long ago and, and things had got so complicated in which, you know, the government, the paramilitary, they all have be created violence in many places and people are displaced. They can't find their family members. It's a very tragic story. Next. That there will be not more bloodshed here in San Onofre. Next. My dream is one day to return home. That's one of the things. Uh, Colombia has one of the largest displaced uh, community uh, I and mean, population in the world. Next. That my Fathers, my parents will uh, smile again. Next. 
Uh, this brings me to this other project uh, that I wanted to share, uh, which is called Mario Safe Gold. Uh, again, thinking of photography uh, um, and how it relates to, to my family history. You know, the project you just saw had to do to understand why I was born in Chile, you know, coming from Argentine parents. And then I realized that my parents had lived this exile. At the same time, I started to trying to understand, you know, that history that kind of uh, mocked me as a child. And when I was finishing this pro that project, my father actually got ill. And, uh, and in our conversations, there was a point in which we, me, by talking to his doctor, came to terms to know that his, his um, days were counted. So he said something very uh, shocking, which, which was, uh, well, I'm not leaving anything behind. And my first reaction was to say, well, you know, as a son, you're, you know, have your children, your wife, um, and your grandchild. And, and he said, no, well, you have your work. And in that sense, he said, he put a point of, you know, the, how there's something, a legacy that stays behind. And I said, okay, if uh, for you, uh, a piece of work, you know, um, actually represents something that is valuable to do, why don't we just sit down and, um, and collaborate on this port portrait. And that brought me back also readings, that as, as I said before, that it has inspired me. And there, there was this, there's this quote by John Berger he, that he talks uh, uh, about, you know, what is, uh, um, what is a portrait? And somehow he thinks of, you know, of this, the shape that is left behind, but, but those to, that we mourn. Um, it is, you know, the space, but also it's the shape that the, the outline of that person is not longer there. And he talks about the Fayum portraits, the portraits that were made in Egypt, you know, during the Greco-Roman presence. And at that time, two people will sit knowing that the next, the other, one, one of the other, that gaze will, will not longer be there sooner than the other. And they were like passport for the afterlife. So I, I asked my father to sit. We did this 12 uh, portraits. I asked him to take one of me, 12, because they're like the cycle of a year. And each time I did one, I will ask him things about his past, sing, things that he will miss, things that he will cherish. Um, and his expression will change little by little. Very next. That's a project that also uh, got me in collaboration with my daughter, uh, which she actually, by chance, uh, did uh, started to sing a song one day, and I recorded it. Uh, and I created an animation that I will try to show you later, um, if there's time, with the port portrait that you saw. And this, I started to work with this idea of, you know, of parenthood. It was a time at that time that I was becoming a father while my father, father was, um, was uh, losing his life. I was becoming, so I was losing my father as I was becoming one. Next. Uh, so I went back and created also an animation I'll try to show you later of working on, on, on his uh, ID photos. And this is what was one of the ones that actually was not taken by me that I found on, on, on one of the, on, on a box and I started researching that archive and trying to bring that into a different perspective. Next. But uh, what struck me then was that we were doing something that now we're doing right now, but we did all throughout the pandemic. And but that time was the time of Skype. And um, one day I was sharing my daughter because I was living in New York and my father was back in, in Buenos Aires. I was traveling back and forth, but there were moments that I went, I was away. And we were trying to keep this communication going, trying to keep what we all did throughout the pandemic 
are, are, are links to the, the loved ones, you know? How it is that those moments became so important, I really realized the day that my father kissed my daughter goodbye and I grabbed a camera and started photographing. Soon after I started to record this in video and that became this piece that I'm just gonna show you now the stills, next. Martin, um, I have the stills for you, no problem. This is wonderfully paced, but we are coming on five minutes here. Just yeah, to... so I'm gonna show you this stills. Next. In that performance, you can go, you know, every five seconds through each, I'm gonna talk over them. In this, in, in this video is, the, is, is a video in which somehow I recorded, next. You know, as, I, as those, the one you saw before, my mother and father showing their affection to my daughter, to the last moments of my father, that I had to witness from far away through the help of my family, just moving the camera around, which was a computer and having to say goodbye to him through there. And what I kind of got from that was those gestures of the family, you know, bare touching that contrasted with this that had put in gloves and the next one that were taking my father away. And the pixelations that you see here reminded us, you know, is, is this th thing that, that of technology that allowed us to be close, but at the same time reminded us that we were far away. And there's this little video with these images of my daughter of her singing to her grandfather. A grandfather that she barely knew on, on, on physical presence, but she got to know more on, on, on through Skype. This is a drawing that is part of the work, it's part of a, a book we just made. I'm just gonna show this. It's a book that we just published. And uh, I invite you to try to, to see it. That's the cover, which was an image of my, my mother that was uh, printed out in a printout paper. So actually if it was kept exposing to the light it will fade as you will see the next one, which is the back cover of the book, which only in which only you see what it remains are the fingerprints of those who had touched the, that image. Next, uh, I can, I mean, if we're here, we can end here. There's small work that I would love to show you. Uh, but I think it, 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 we're right on time, so we can go to the questions. Uh, this is another project that I will, wish I, I could have time to share, but I think uh, let's, let's switch back to questions and okay. see what we can. Hello, I'm back. Martine, what a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. You had so much insights and stories behind your subjects and your series. Um, just wonderful. I actually quoted you for a few questions I had, but it's up in the chat here. Okay. So one of the first questions I had, I really like that you referenced um, Bart. So you said photography turns everything into the past, right? But you also had noted yourself that time is kind of a presence, but also a disorder itself. I'm looking at my notes here, sorry. Um, so I actually wanted to ask you, how do you keep time and how do you map quite literally? There's such an extensive career and practice and series. So, uh, you know, I'm just curious about that and how that means to you. Well, I mean, what I didn't say before, I was going, trying to go fast, was that I, I'm interested in time as a, as a concept. And one of the things that I wanted with that project and in general is to challenge that idea of, you know, that, you know, a photograph is just about past. And by including the dream, and that was one of the, 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 the exercises that I did was this idea of, you know, again, having uh, something share, being shared in the present, but also, per, you know, having people in that present go through their past, think about their past and think about where they wanna be, think about their future. So actually in that collaboration, we created this time capsules yes. in which you have a past, you have a present, which 
throughout all the project, the moment of sharing that space, the moment of sharing that, that time was very important. It was about regaining that thing about photography that mainly we have lost over the years. You know, that's one of the things that we are so bombarded of images. We take images and sometimes we don't even see them. It was about paying homage and paying tribute to that moment of, you know, being together. Uh, that's something that uh, even in the last project I, 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 I emphasize is that sharing that moment with my father was so important and having even him take an image of myself. And that's one of the things of how I did that project, that most of the process, that's why I put it on a tripod. The camera is not something I'm hiding behind. I'm doing all this labor in front of them. So it's, it's a moment that in which we're sharing. I'm observing, they're observing me. There's something about trying to level that, to go from this idea of the photographer that will take as, as, some, as somebody that I will share. Obviously, you know, I, I, uh, there's more power that remain in my hands, but it was about trying to break that and try to make something that was more horizontal, you know. Yeah, um, I love how you answered that, Martin, because I was gonna pose a question uh, in that way of like, how do you see your role? But then I was like, that's not the way to put that. I understand what's happening here. Um, so thank you. No, but we have to think of, you know, one of the things, and I, and I talk a lot now that I did the film, which is, this is a 30 year, you know, term project, you know, 20 years doing the, the first part, which, you know, the actions were main, a main uh, gesture about, you know, about that project. I was inspired, you know, a lot about uh, on artists that did performance. There's a performative part of that. There's action. There's like, uh, yes. there are so many things that go into that. But also it's this idea of, you know, where, yeah, where do I place myself? But in that specific time, when I started this project, there was no social media. There were no phones that, in which you could actually take your picture and tell your own story. So there were a lot of things that, are, as I mentioned, the newspaper. So there were a lot of stories that did not make the media, did not meet public. So at that time, I thought it was very important to create a space in which people and where people could actually share their stories. It's not, you know, it's it's more like you know putting all these um, tools and and craft in the service of other people's voices. Right. I mean, and that kind of takes me to my what, next question. Oh, go what ahead. I feel now, you know, after all these years, and particularly with, you know, now with the film, is that what happens is that, okay, now people can share their stories. But what, what is lacking in most of the cases is context. That's one of the things I'm more concerned, you know, in my practice um, now is how to create. I, I'm always thinking about the context. And one of the things that's why I wanted to show so many of you know each project, and it's very difficult, is that every image, every story kind of takes the hand of the next one and the one that's gonna come after. And they're kind of telling you, you know, what is what is that they share? Right. And what, you know, and the context of one puts you in perspective of the other one. Because of, it's it's a big invitation to listen, to actually listen to other people. Oh, I like how you said that. I mean, absolutely. And you quite literally answered my question about mapping. Um, but this kind of leads to the other question I had, which I just kind of wanted you to expand on something you had said, which was, you know, you were talking about the interior um, series, intimacy of that. And you talked about how people are composed differently by people. Right. So can you kind of talk further about that? I was really interested in how you described that gesture in that space. Hi, Michael. Well, I mean, there, there is... Uh, I think that, again, I, I try to deconstruct because I think we're all constructing things and this is a construction. And that was one of the things that also I wanted to make evident in my practice is that these are constructions. Again, this is something that I did, which has the leverage of people. But again, it's another, you know, cut out of reality. Uh, um, I'm trying to, you know, make it better. We're always going to fail, I think. But I, I mean, but but there is something about, you know, when when in in 
and advertisement of political platforms that sometimes you see that they're not that far different from each other. Right. You know, people's dreams, people's stories are being used, you know, from one, from one uh, with one objective or with one idea or the other. And I think it's very important to try to take that apart and uh, actually, you know, go to the places. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, that I, I'm not saying what I did is better or worse. I'm just saying is I tried to, see, to, to do something different. Uh, when you hear people debating things, I never have gone to those places. Uh, I think uh, there was this idea with this big projects was, was okay, you know, instead of talking for the people, I wanna create a space where they will tell their story. Instead of you know thinking that I know a place, going to those places that have a specific history, and also do research for every place that I had to go, I had to do a lot of research and read and connect with local uh, journalists, uh, um, human rights activists, um, writers. I mean, this whole spectrum that actually will feed me things, and I will understand more. The, and actually, I will try to bring back like the echoes has this parallel you know, um, narrative from the visual one. And there's actually uh, writings on each, you know, each image goes to a specific writing that sometimes they're actually on what they, you see on the image. And sometimes there are actually things that you, know, you don't see on the images because I'm very interested in what is visible and what is not. Uh, I'm, as in sound, I'm interested in silence and noise, you know. I'm trying to just take those uh, concepts apart to the try. Images to are them. so still too, you know. So that's Martin. Do you, do you awesome. Martin? Do you? <laughs> I'd, be, I'd like to hear your in, your ideas on the idea of time because you know the the work has such um, the the signs talk about the the signs people are holding talk about the past and is some of the some of them are their dreams some of them are, are I wish my son was alive kind of thing and then. Um, uh, there's there's all of the 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 history of the Perons and and that in in the Argentinian stuff, um, and aside from the actual political world that you're you're describing through these signs, I'm very interested in in hearing your ideas on um, on how your work presents time, like presents time, because it's full of ghosts, right? I mean, there's ghosts yeah. throughout the work. Uh, can can we just show one image that was coming after the one we we just? Uh, I'm gonna jump to another project just to show one image. Uh, sure, one second. Let me let me pull it up yeah. share the screen. Which is a project that it, it, it it's kind of spin off of 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 what uh, what I showed you. The next one. Let's go to the let's go to the one more one more uh, one of those. Can you do? Can you scroll a little down? Yeah, one of those, that one. Okay. If you, can do, if you can do full screen. These are images that look like landscapes, no? And these are uh, real size cyanotypes made from the, the, the glasses that covered Peron's coffin that were broken to steal his hands. Oh. So the cracks that you see there uh, are actually the cracks that were on the on the glass. Right. What looks like a setting sun or a rising sun is actually the hole from which they took the hands. So I take I do this, and there are seven, one for each day, and they're called Dia Peronista. So I refer to one of you know one of this um, first appropriations that I see of, of a political con um, party of a sunny and blue sky day, as the one you saw on the Peron speaking, you know, to the crowds on the map that morning. And what I'm trying to do, and this is inspired on, on a book by Tomás Eloy Martínez that talks about Evita that was embalmed. And he talks about that Evita was the first disappeared uh, in, uh, in Argentine history because her body was taken for over, I think 14 years, and disappear from the hands of you know, his husband Peron by the military and then return. Mm. And there is this thing 
there is this concept that he goes through and he said that the veneration towards her, her body that was embalmed, it, it is something that actually holds Argentinians to an anchor, mm. something that holds them to the past and does not enable them to move into the future. So, I mean, um, concepts like that are embedded or are things that I think through the process in which I embark doing the projects that I do. Um, is this idea that is not only mine, uh, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm trying, trying to think of, uh, of the guy who is, is skipping my name and the name, but I'm trying, I, I'll remember. But it's this idea of how, you know, on moments of crisis, there are times that are you know kind of left in 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 the back and suddenly they kind of emerge but they emerge in a again as i said before in a disorderly way right uh, it's I, as you saw the poster is when you keep venerating this this uh, this um figures as we have done throughout uh throughout the years in countries like in argentina or where on even when you keep repeating processes, like I mentioned in, 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 in Colombia, where violence is something that is replicated and, and, and right. kind of made in different ways, but actually um, reinserted or being played again, I'm, I'm trying to find exactly the word, uh, you find yourself that you're not breaking breaking out from the past, but you're actually exercising the same problems that will not allow you to 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 move forward. Right. There's no refiguring, restructuring. Yeah. Of space. Right. I, I don't know if I answer well. You did. Great. Do. Definitely did, Martin. But we have one question in the chat that I wanted to get to. It's from Paula Ely, right? You know Paula, she helped you come here to the talk. So, um, hi Martin, I want to let people know that your work was included in a significant exhibition at the Getty Museum about photography from Argentina. Have you found it a challenge to engage with international institutions? It sometimes seems that South America is a bit isolated from the global art world. Oh, good question, Paula. Yes, uh, well, I mean, and then we, we, we got the pandemic. <laughs> So that was one of the things that uh, that for although it you know uh, platforms like this one allow me to be here and be speaking to an audience uh, so far away, it is true that we are far. That being able to travel to meet, I mean, many things and many um, and and again those encounters that I that I I refer to in the practice of photography are human encounters. And, and I think they're most valuable. And um, to, to be able to share the work, to be able to, to bring the work to other audiences, I think is so, uh, so inspiring. And, uh, and as an artist, I learned so much. Uh, and it's something that we all wanna do because I mean, it, it is not just talking to ourselves. It's about you know, bringing this and finding again, what is that we share as human beings? Uh, I try uh, showing the last project, which is more about something that we all go through. I said, you know, if, if there's something that we all share is that we're born and we're going to die. Uh, those things are clearly something that we, we have in common. So as, as artists, we, we try to find things that actually to talk to the specifics, but also try to find our, you know, our meeting points in the universal. Right. Answer that so well, Martin. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you again for that question, Paula. Um, so everyone, we're coming on um, 409 now. Uh, this is typically when we, you know, in, in the conversation for today. Um, so Martina, unless there's any closing thoughts that you have or Michael Holly or anyone in the chat. Just wanted to say in the chat, there was someone, um, uh, Neil Freeberg said, um, uh, Francisco Goldman's novel Monkey Boy tells much about the crimes in Guatemala, and um, that that just was a comment from one of the one of the viewers. Um, there's so many great books that are written about about this kind of 
think in Colombia that, that one comes to mind the sound of things falling Velasquez that that fantastic book anyway yeah well what that I, I'm so happy that 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 is something that it, it's I mean what that's one of the aims of the project is uh, I, I, it's not answering questions. It's also, you know, that question will rise throughout the project and people that, you know, uh, will be triggered to know more about the circumstances around each story. Wonderful. I think that's a good ending point there, Martine. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank, thank you, you so much to you. Yes. Everyone, thank you so much for sticking around and staying with us. Again, please share this. The recording will be up in the coming weeks. Um, and again, there's chats. Please visit the uh, links in the chat that we shared earlier. And until next time, have a good rest of your day. Um, oh, um, please uh, share the uh, maybe the, um, the trailer. Uh, that would be nice uh, so people can see it. Uh, I think if not, I'll send you a link for the trailer. Of okay. The film. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. I hope it was good. Uh, it was great, Martin. Thank you. Okay. Be in touch. Bye-bye.